Yeah, uh, receive evidence for your, your opinion. The County Board of Supervisors October 18th meeting notice of agenda was posted in the Government Center building in two places, posted on the county website on October 7th, 2022. It was published in a legal newspaper the week of October 10th, um, published on October 12th. In addition, on Friday, October 7th, 2022, at 1.38 p.m., the Office of the County Clerk distributed copies of such notice of meeting to supervisors and media via email or mail. And the notice of the amended agenda was posted in the government center, posted on the county website, and copies of such notice meeting were distributed to the supervisors and media via email or mail on Friday, October 14, 2022. That complies with the open meetings law. Thank you. Roll call, please. Brad Olson. Here. Doug Rowdy. Here. Steve Warnell. Here. Ryan Wood. Here. Tracy LeBlanc. Here. Dan Rock. Here. Barbara McAfee. Here. Karen Kelly. Here. Kim O'Connell. Here. Amy Middleton. Here. Jay Luke. Here. Denise Lally Here. Russ Arcand. Here. DJ Simonis. Here. John Bonaprice. Here. All members are here and present. Okay. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Foundation under God, invisible, liberty, and justice for all. What's on the agenda? Move to approve the agenda as presented. I would like to make a motion on the agenda to remove resolution 4622 and send it back to the committee. And with that, this is move with approval. You, you made the motion. You made the motion. Yeah, I made the motion and he made an addition to the motion. I accepted his invitation and asked for approval. Sorry, I missed that. For which one to be sent back to the committee? 4622. Checking that. Just so we're clear, we have a, a motion to approve the agenda, and then there was a request to have that motion amended to be approved the agenda with the exception of that particular resolution having setting that one back to the committee, and then that was seconded. So you if you were just so I, I want to make sure that we know what we're voting on. The way I understand procedurally, if you vote yes, you will accept the agenda as presented minus that resolution because it will go back to committee. And that's all I stated. Okay. Now that it's been seconded, like is that something for discussion or does that have to be voted on? Discussed. What would you like uh, it to go back to committee for? The public, including anybody who doesn't sit on general government. Uh, I didn't see this resolution. Never knew it was coming until 1030 Friday morning. Um, it wasn't on the agenda for general government. It wasn't on the agenda originally for the county board until it was amended. And then the, the I don't know, whatever you want to call them, talking points, bullet points. My understanding is did not even come to general government. They came after general government on the county board agenda. And I mean, if, if this is the way resolutions are going to come to the county board, <clears throat> I can deal with it. I'm fine with it. But I, I think the county residents deserve some transparency as, as far as, as what's there. I mean, you go back, look at the minutes of the September meeting of general government, and it directed county staff to write a resolution to come to the county board. But it didn't come through general government it was to be handed out at, at the last second where no one could see it. I watched the general government right up until the meeting. It never hit the general government agenda. And it took until Friday at 10 o'clock for it to hit the amended agenda. It isn't about if I'm for or against the resolution. It's about the process of how 
we do <laughs> things. And if we're not going to tell the public what we're doing until two and a half business days before county board meeting and not before a committee meeting at all, we we are in trouble. What is it that you're saying wasn't present? Because this issue has been talked about at general government multiple times. Were you at the last county board meeting? No. We also discussed it at the last county board meeting and that this, was, that this was going to be brought up. So there's been plenty of discussion about it and there's been plenty of foresight as to when it was going to be talked about again. I think a lot of people in this room can attest to when it's been talked about. So I think it's just a misrepresentation to say that this came out of nowhere. It's been talked about. So why would, so I guess my question is why wasn't it on the general government agenda? What wasn't on the agenda? Because this has been the on the general government agenda. The resolution was not on the agenda. agenda packet. So we had, I got to think back to Jim Gov. I'm, I'm, we didn't have a resolution. It was on the agenda. Only it was on the agenda. It was not in the packet. The resolution wasn't? The resolution wasn't. The agenda says, Review of a possible draft resolution on a proposed plan to develop local senior housing. That's that's pretty vague to our to our constituents out there as to what we're going to talk about is that there's a possibility, and then it's handed out at the last second. Where this is, I agree with you, Ryan. This has been coming for a month. I mean, back in September, general government told staff to draft the resolution. So why wasn't it on general government? Why wasn't it in the in in the in the county board packet to start with? Why did it come two and a half days before our meeting? Two and a half business days before our meeting. That's my problem with it. Not what the resolution says. Not what the resolution does. It's the simple fact that if this is the process that we're going to take to bring resolutions forward, <coughs> we're in danger of the public never knowing anything of what this county board does because. No one knows what's what's here tonight. Mr. Chair, go ahead. I got a call today about the same just from somebody in the general public stating the same thing that you uh, that you said, and that's why I texted. I was at I was at the EDC breakfast this morning, and I had multiple people coming up to me and saying, "Good luck on your without discussion." Or prompting good luck on your resolution tonight. Like I've had people, and so I mean we've all got anecdotal situations about whether or not people knew about this. And what are the minutes in the case of general government? <clears throat> you have them ready. The September minutes. The September minutes. No. October minutes. Right. I can. I, I don't know if you can pull them up and read them, but yeah, uh, I can pull them up. The only thing about this resolution was it was a review and possible draft resolution on proposed plan to develop local senior housing. Motion to move the resolution along to the board with mutual recommendation. Yeah. Discussion and motion carried. So it was discussed in general government. I did have a resolution there. And it's recommended move. Yeah. The, uh, the, the error, the reason it was an amended agenda was because the when we looked at the draft agenda uh, for this board meeting, the clerk had, had said, are we putting something on here? Or she put it on the list, on the agenda. And nobody got back and said yay or nay. And she, in fact, I went and asked her about it. I said, no, nope, that's supposed to be on the agenda. And she said, I'm sorry, but nobody ever said yes or no. So we just amended it as soon as we found out. And I don't think I was on any of that conversation. So I didn't okay, let's act that. on the motion. Mr. Chair, may I just address one procedural thing? Because this amendment, or excuse me, this resolution would direct the administrator to include in his proposed budget a this topic, this this program fund, by sending it to committee and not addressing it before November's budget meeting, it kills it completely. Now that doesn't mean the administrator can't still put it in there as a possibility for the full board to consider in November. The only difference would be the full board hadn't directed him to do so. But it does 
procedurally completely kill this particular resolution. It would never come back. So sending it to committee is truly a vote to not pass it, just so everybody's clear. Okay, is it clear on the amendment on the uh status on that? We it's asked to be amended. We are acting on the amendment. Your your procedural is is to send it back to committee and proceed with the agenda without it. That is the vote you're having now. On the motion. Does everybody understand what your vote would do? This just for a point. It's just to take it on or off the agenda. Right. This is all we're voting on right now. And approving the rest of the agenda. Yeah. It was a combined. So this one is it's either we're gonna take it up later when it comes up or not. No. No, we're not gonna take it. I think you if, just said it's well, dead. We voted off. We, we voted, voted off but if it dead, stays on, unless we'll take it up later. Right. later. Yeah. Yeah. We're voting yes is taking it off and voting no is leaving it. Okay. And is it correct that it says it takes two thirds to bring to floor? Oh, that's, that's what it says on here. On my right. please. Second. Vote required two thirds to bring to the floor. Any majority? I don't know why that's on there. It would not need a two thirds, it would need a straight majority. That's probably my scrivener's here. On the motion, all in favor. Can, can we clarify again because it's kind of confusing a yes a yes vote is a vote to remove it from the agenda correct a no vote is to keep it on the agenda as yeah correct right. roll call vote okay Russ Narcant yeah EJ Simonis yes John Bonaparte yes Brad Olson yes Doug Rowdy no. Steve Warndahl? Yes. Brian Wood? No. Tracy LeBlanc? Yes. Dan Ruck? Yes. Barbara McAfee? No. Karen Kelly? Yes. Tim O'Connell? Yes. Amy Middleton? No. Denise Lallier Price? No. That is nine yeses and five no. Okay, that'll be removed from this uh, agenda. <clears throat> With that exception, need a vote on the approval of the agenda. So moved. Okay, and seconded. Second. Madam. All in favor? Aye. 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 For the same sign. Okay, matters offered for the adoption on consent agenda. The motion to approve resolution 4222, 4322, and the board's board. I'll second it. And the minutes, excuse me. And the minutes from November 10th. Okay. I'll second it. Motion made and seconded on matters for adoption of A, B, C, and D on the uh, agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wait, I, I had a question. Oh, you have a question? Um, on resolution um, with the town of Garfield piece, is are we what's the process for this? Was this that the town came to us and then we just have to, to have approve it? Zone. Is that how that works? They have their own I'm zoning. Sorry. Yep. And we approve it to make sure it's with the comp plan also. So they brought they sent stuff that's in the red, they send to us, and then we say, Yeah, that's okay. But they, we so go right. through it and look at it at the committee level on the case, and they go through it to make sure it doesn't. Conflict with all the comprehensive plans that they have set forth. Okay, so it's just the matching the apples to apples. Yeah, so now if Garfield does it, uh, Sacred Falls will do it. And, uh, okay. okay, thank you. Okay, public comment. Do we have any public comment? There's no public comment, Mr. Chairman. Oh, <laughs> there is now. We're going to uh, oh, certainly number 10. You wanted to update yours prior to the presentation of the administrators operating in the popular budget. Sure, I'd love to. I bet. You know, you need to the board works directly. Uh, just a quick update on the government center project. Um, the big thing right now we're dealing with is we have no heat in the building. 
We have no AC either, but we don't need that. Um, right now we're doing temporary uh, heaters in there right now, space heaters today. Uh, we have nine 50,000 UPU larger units coming in tomorrow to help offset the, the cold spots on that. Um, we don't expect the boilers to be online until November 7th, once we're into phase three when the offices move, we demo that, then we can get the piping done, get the system to look like all, and get that system back online. So it does take a little bit of time for that. So county staff has been very good dealing with that and layering up a little bit in the office. We're at 58 degrees this morning, so they're pretty chilly. Um, other than that, we're still dependent on uh, lead times on items. Our doors did come in finally, and our door frames. So the moves for the offices are still next week for the second floor, and then uh, the week of Halloween for the ERC and the vets. Well, that is still on track for that. Um, other than that, we are moving forward with uh, pouring the pads for the generators and the chillers outside. Um, we've got the camera uh, system to run to the lights out front. So all that's in process. So that's that's the latest right now. Uh, still trending um, on the same on the budget. Is our November meeting going to be at the uh, the HVAC is supposed to go, or excuse me, the AV is supposed to go in the boardroom the last week of October. The furniture is supposed to be installed the second week of November. All that being said, that works out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we're really, checking on you, Doctor Boy. Really, there's a timing, so hopefully that the November meeting we can't hold hold in there. But hopefully that. Are you okay. saying we got? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have one. What kind of numbers are we looking at? What do you think the overrun is going to be? We're still trying to get two hundred forty-six thousand over right now without phase two. We're 246 over. That's projected throughout the end of the project of the work that we're seeing right now, which is it, it's at that two to three percent. We will have some credits coming back in for temporary cooling. Um, that was in the budget that we didn't uh, do that many weeks of temporary cooling. So we're still trending at two to three percent over budget. And that's over contingency we spent too. Correct. Okay. That's all in. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Administrator, that was the quickest yet. All right, thank you. I will say that while it's been cold, people have been working hard to put together the budget and uh, warming up the room temperature a little bit. So I'm going to give you a little presentation on how we put together the operating budget. You do have in front of you this right here. I'll Tell you briefly that this is merely a draft of the budget it's not complete so that's why we have drafts all over it keep in mind that uh, part of the reason it's draft because anything we do or say in this room that changes what's been considered or proposed changes all the numbers in here or changes many of them but uh, you'll see in here the uh, levy calculation the budget summaries and FTEs account by code those of you who've been around, you've seen that report before. We it, It's hard to understand because it's by account numbers, not by alphabetical order or anything. But then you also have things like the capital improvement plan and the fee schedule has been approved. So all that is in here. After tonight, we hope to be able to go back and update the numbers and uh, then we'll have the final draft. Um, one of the things you approved in the consent agenda, just so you know, was a resolution, it's kind of a boilerplate resolution that uh, allows us to publish this and provide it to the papers and to the public so that we can have a public hearing next week for the board meeting or next month for the board meeting. So, so that, that start, that'll that start at 5.30 as usual. Yeah, 5.30 <laughs> for public comment and uh, we'll have that available. So. Um, one thing I want to do, though, is I, I want to give special thanks to some people uh, that a lot of people have put a lot of work in on this. And, and Don Wortham, our general government director, has really spearheaded this. Sherry Poyer, our finance manager and back. I don't know if you've met her yet. Uh, accountant, auditor. Uh, you know, she is is punching, crunching the numbers and making sure we're on track. 
And of course, Tammy and the staff, uh, Sherry's staff up there have just been outstanding and they've really pulled together. So if I could start here, you see here the topics in this presentation. Um, we'll talk about opportunities and challenges. I'll give you a brief snapshot of how the budget uh, falls out. We'll get into more detail talking about revenue and expenditures. I'll dig into some of the fund balances that are of importance to us. I'll highlight then the capital projects that are we're proposing, and then uh, you as board members will have some decisions to make on certain specific uh, items. So next slide, opportunity. We do have some great opportunities. And I think over the, the three years that I've been here, you all set some priorities for us, and that helps us a great deal. It enables us to identify opportunities, devote resources, or consider spending resources on those priorities that you all set. Keep in mind, and I'll say this several times throughout this presentation, that in the spring of 23, we'll be resetting new priorities. Could be the same priorities, could be different. But... Think about what we did, especially with parks and trails, some of the things we're doing there. Think about broadband and how we've really invested some money there. Uh, you may have new priorities come May in which you know, we'll want to spend some, some resources there. So when you get to that general fund uh, balance of how much money you can spend, keep in mind, you don't want to spend it all probably because there may be other things that are important for you going uh, down the road. Um, and that's what I mean by responding strategically to emerging issues. Okay. Challenges goes without saying the economy is number one on a lot of people's minds. Uh, we know that the inflation has been something significant. We also now are reading about the likelihood of a recession coming on. So those are things that are in the back of our minds as we try to put together this budget. Another key challenge is how do we attract and retain workforce? We've heard a lot about it. We're in the same boat as a lot of people, so we have to make sure we're doing things not only from financial reasons, but also maybe some other benefits to help people uh, feel uh, successful, feel wanted, and, and have a rewarding career here. Can I ask you a question about the workforce? Sure. Is there some place or way that we can see kind of where things are now? There's some. Yeah, there's we're going to get into how many there are. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll talk about how we're going to, uh, what our proposed in terms of uh, cost okay. of living increase and a merit increase. All right. Uh, and it's, you know, what it's based on. Thank you. Uh, state funding model. I say that because uh, you'll see some numbers in here comparing uh, how much money we have in terms of revenue coming from state sources, federal sources, it's gone down considerably. Uh, we expect that to continue. So that affects our revenue. And then just general budget pressures in terms of uh, inflation, cost of healthcare, those types of things. Not to mention uh, any organization is gonna have shifts, right? An organization that isn't like a hard metal object that never changes its shape. Over time, you're going to have some shifting from here to there based on current needs or priorities. Finally, I put at the bottom here demographic. Just another way to say we've got an aging population in this county. Certainly, we're going to be working hard to, to keep people here, to bring people into our community, to fill jobs and that type of thing. But that's also something that we have to keep uh, top of mind. Okay. The snapshot. <clears throat> Good news. Our revenues are projected to come in at $61.4 million in 2023, our expenses at 61 million. So what that means is, is, is we've got revenues and we've got expenses in the budget I've put forward to you tonight. Uh, it says there a surplus of just under 400,000. Well, that's another way of saying, you know, when I talked to Sherry, well, you do have a surplus, but those funds are really committed things like our uh, GAM, uh, recycling, ADRC, there is some money left over. What's left over then goes into my contingency fund, which is available when a project pops up or a need or we run over something. So basically, I, I would say 
the revenues and expenses we've got pretty level right now. Um, the levy is just under $23 million. That is an increase of $334,000 from last year. That's based on net new construction. Uh, I've mentioned, I think in previous committees, that the net new construction in this county was strong. Uh, it's about average for the state in terms of dollars, but that includes a lot of big counties, right? If you look at our percentage increase in rank, uh, we're up in the top third. So we are seeing some decent growth relative to other counties. Uh, FTEs, we're always looking at it. We talked a little bit about shifting and so on. Actually down, uh, we're reporting this year by about 12 uh, compared to last year. All of that decrease is in game. If you recall, uh, beds, we're not filling as many beds there for you know, basically because we don't have staff. We've had a lot of open positions. The new business model we're working with them is they're going to focus uh, on I think about, uh, well, they're at about 60 now or 58, and we may get that up a little bit, uh, but we don't need, we didn't have those positions filled last year, so we're reducing the FTEs there. And then finally, you'll see in this budget, we have funds in there for you all move toward priorities of yours. So we'll get to that. Um, the next slide, key budget figures. Total budget, 61.4 million and 23. That's compared to 68, or I'm sorry, yeah, 68.4 and 22. That's about a $7 million difference, shrinking. Um, this is dropping down largely because of the financing that we did for the reconstruction of the building. So that money was put into our budget from our loan. And so that's not there this year. We also had uh, $2 million that we put in the book last year for the Clam Falls Dam. Again, when the state said we have that money, that's $2 million that we will transfer now into 2023. So it's just something to keep in mind when you see, hey, wait a minute, you're you're down $2 million. Well, <coughs> we are still to transfer that money over to 2023. Um, <clears throat> so revenues and expenditures, you can see the projected surplus there. Uh, and then down below here, we have the mill rate, $3.34 per $1,000 in valuation. Now that's less than last year at 3.9% or $3.90 for $1,000. But keep in mind the, um, not on there, our, uh, the appraisals of our properties have gone way up. So the revaluation of our properties have gone up significantly. I'll show you that. So it is kind of a mixed dude. I, I had a, a old neighbor Give me a pretty nasty text message the other day. He said, gee whiz, my house value went up twice. Does that mean my taxes are going up two times? No, the taxes are going to stay basically the same when it comes to the county uh, because the mill rate will come down accordingly. <coughs> okay, next, we're going to look at revenue. We can go on to the next slide. Um, <coughs> Equalized values, as I had mentioned, you can see the jump of about a billion dollars in equalized values in, in Polk County. Um, the housing prices have skyrocketed, right? Most of you probably had your house reappraised this year. Those appraisers were everywhere. They caught me at two houses. Uh, so a uh, billion dollars, I think that's about, I calculated about 18 and a half percent increase. So the value of the county is going up. The next slide shows the mill rate, which just proportionally goes down. And that's why uh, the people's taxes, they'll see, value their house up, but the mill rate which we charge or create their property taxes will come down to reflect that. Okay. Most of you have seen this before, how we calculate the levy. This is where Sherry's at her best, is they get that formula from the state and we have to calculate everything. We start here at 2022, it's a mill rate of 3.9. 
the equalized value that year versus the equalized value this year, you can see the increase 18.6% and our mill rate has gone down. Um, the other thing I would point out, the net new construction up one and a half percent. My proposed levy is about $23 million. Now you'll see there the additional allowable levy that is actually from last year. We are in actually the previous years. If you recall the last couple of years, in an effort to keep the taxes down, we agreed uh, to not use all of the levy. This year, we're using all the levy, but we're not going back and using that additional allowable levy this year. We can do that. We can do it next year too. Uh, but when you do that, you tax well, right? It's allowable but we just have to raise the mill rate slightly to pick up that money. I feel good about this because quite frankly, I think next year will be tighter. So I like the idea of having that. If we need some funds, that may be something we can pull in for the levy next year. Okay, sales tax, budget estimates. This is, this is an incredible story. I mean, if you, if you want to think about it, this has really helped the county uh, over the last several years. You can see the growth, the budgeted, what we budgeted, and the orange is the actual. We project in 2022 to receive about 4.95, just under $5 million in sales tax. We don't know how long it's going to keep going up like that, but it's been a good story. What's going to happen if there's a recession? What's going to happen if people start losing their jobs and factory orders go down? You're probably going to see less purchases of those big items. Sales tax will be affected somewhat. On the flip side, though, my daughter, my wife, my family, everybody orders on Amazon now. We very seldom go to the mall. What that means is when you order it online now, the sales tax comes back to the state in which you order it. Beforehand, when people drive to the mall and you buy it there, Minnesota got the sales tax. So in a way, I think part of this, not only is the economy and how strong it's been, but I think it's also the emergence of online purchases is helping this county uh, in terms of their sales tax. So we projected, I think, a very solid number of 4.4 million. We've talked to our consultants who say, they feel comfortable with that number, but uh, you know, if we go up higher than that, then eh, you know, we can't guarantee it. But they think 4.4 is a very realistic number. Okay. Expenses. Big expense, of course, is FTEs and people. It's a very valuable resource, so I'm, I'm happy that that's the case. But you can see here. Uh, we're staying flat in the general center, we're actually up one head count. That head count, that FTE uh, here in the, the main campus is for the Corporation Council's office. You know, uh, we looked at, at, at uh, what they do and the number of types of cases they take on, and where we were shortchanging them is in the area of um, child protective services, uh, deadbeat parents. We need sometimes legal support to, to back up our uh, policies on that. Uh, the other thing is uh, zoning enforcement. You know, Bob and his staff can uh, find mistakes out there. We're finding more and more of them or, or people who haven't gone through the appropriate process. We can go out and cite them, but sometimes we need to enforce that. And uh, it's very difficult for Malia and Joe to do that when they don't have enough support staff to help them put together a lot of work. So uh, this is just a person that will be a, a staff person for them to help do some of the, the work. And then you can see the drop though, in terms of gain. All right, <clears throat> this is getting to Barbara's question a little bit. Um, investing in our team, total rewards. We, did a, we, we got a survey of about 23 counties in Western and Northern Wisconsin. And uh, we looked at their plans for cost of living increases and so on. And so what our philosophy is, is we wanna be better than average. We wanna keep growing our uh, 
pay and our benefits for our employees. So the cost of living adjustment that I'm proposing is 3.7%. In addition to that, many of the employees uh, who are not uh, extremely high in their, in their job range will also get or be eligible for a 2% merit increase. So that's about 5.7% for a lot of our employees to increase. A little below the private sector, but I think it compares favorably uh, to other county governments. In addition, the other thing you're getting at, I think, Barbara, is a wage study. It's been, uh, I remember talking with Chad about this, I think it's been over 10 years since we've had a wage study. And what that is, is you get some objective people to come in and say, how do you pay your employees? How does that compare to other counties, to other governments? the area and the nation, but it, it'll give us an idea of how we're doing. It, it, and we know that in some jobs, we're probably too low. In other jobs, we're really competitive and even, you know, maybe superior in many ways than what we pay. So that's in the budget this year. That could cost anywhere from twenty five to 50000 but we it's something that we have to do so that we can be accurate and remain competitive in the market. Also, in terms of rewarding people, we had seven employees who are moving up in grades. In each of those cases, it's because of increased responsibilities, increased assignments that uh, kind of move them up in terms of their grade. Keeping benefits competitive, uh, and, and, you know, this is actually a pay rate. We are not increasing again for the third year uh, their premium for health insurance. So those who do get health insurance will not have a raise again. I, having come from the private sector, and some of you do as well, that's unheard of. But because we had such a strong health fund balance, we feel like we want to do as much as we can in that regard. It won't be forever. You know, at some point, you know, you have to have a, a, an organization that shares in this and they feel the importance of being smart and making good judgment in healthcare. So this won't last forever, but we thought let's do it one more year if we can to keep that flat. Total employee related expense, 32.3 million. Does anybody remember what our total levy was? 23 million is our levy. So our levy and more goes to our most valuable asset, right? The, the, people, uh, which is good, but we also look at that and say we have to keep our eye on that. We have to maintain uh, the expenses there somehow. So, all right, next <coughs> slide. Now, one of the things we always talk about in this presentation are outside <coughs> agencies. In the past, we were flush with cash. We had a lot of people coming, asking for money for the first time, or they would come back and ask for additional money uh, the next year. Our feeling was we need to get some stability in this. We need to make sure that we're not just handing out money. These are all great organizations. Uh, and some of them came and asked for more money. Some of them just asked for the same. And we looked at it and said, we got to look at things like, what are they asking? Why, why do they need the money? And if they had a specific need or a specific crises or something, that's one thing. But if it was to do more stuff, then we looked at things like, how are their financial records? What, how, how strong are they financially? How much money do they raise other than from the county? And in all of these cases, we felt very good about the amount of, amount of money they were receiving from us. <laughs> so we did not increase any of them. We kept them the same as last year. Uh, the loan exception is the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. And that's something that is based on the census data. It's like a tax. Uh, it, when the state established these organizations, that you know they would get paid based on your population. And uh, with the census data went up a little bit, so did the amount that we gave them. Uh, you will notice on there, so the total expenditures, is two hundred and seven thousand dollars for outside organizations. One organization, 
that came to us, uh, community referral agency. Outstanding organization, they do good work. First time they've come in, in several years, since I think Dana was the administrator. Um, and because and part of that was because of our goals of keeping this thing stable and flat, uh, I'm not recommending that we give to them. Part of that reason is because they were probably the strongest in terms of finances. They have uh, a high percentage of donations from various organizations. Uh, they get lots of money from other sources. Uh, and so I like them. I want them to keep coming back, and that may be something we do next year. But I did not include them here. What do they do? Uh, worthy cause. So, um, and, and, and that is not a reflection of that at all. It's no, just a matter I'm sure of. Sure, they don't know it. Yeah. Fund balances, some of the bigger funds. Some of the questions that come up in the committees since uh, we changed our financial policy this current year and said we want to maintain our general fund at least 50%, kind of keep it as our safety uh, reserve fund. And if you recall the auditor when they came and said, oh, you got a big surge in your general fund of 28 million. So I asked. Terry and Don to break that down to say, what is it that we truly have left over from that $28 million when you take out things that we are already committed to spending it on? So, you know, things like you take out the finances, the $8 million in finances, or 8.2 million. Uh, we have certain things uh, like dedicated funds for parks and trails and the line for it. The Clam Falls Dam Fund, the $574,000 is what Northwestern Wisconsin Electric Company gave to us with the dam. That was in their reserve fund. So that if anything happened to the dam, and for example, if we had to take it down, we could use that money uh, to do that. Uh, ARPA funds that we've already committed. So when you take all of those things out, you're left with $2.677 million plus the unallocated ARPA funds that we have not allocated yet at $2.795 million. Uh, <clears throat> so then that red number there, the $745,000, those are things that I provisionally approved from uh, additional funding requests from staff to say, here are projects that we think are important. So I've already asked there to take out another $745,000, and I'll show you all of those items moving forward here. So one way to look at this is the total unencumbered amount over that 50% is $4.7 million. Yes. Didn't we say the dam, we have $2 million, and we have 574 Earlier, you said we yeah we're going to transfer two million. Well, that two million is that two million that we put in the books when the state said <clears throat> they passed in their budget. We will get that two million dollars. We put that in the books. We never got the money. <clears throat> is another fund. This is the five. This is the money that North <clears throat> Wisconsin Electric had in their uh, what do you call it escrow fund. So where does this? Where does the other two million? Where is that? In that it's in the, in the 2022 budget it will not be spent in 2022 and we will ask you to carry it over to 23. so a theme thinking ahead if, if one might say and certainly your choice oh we got 4.7 million to spend we're going to ask you to think about choose wisely because you saw the challenges coming with the economy and you saw some other things. Our bias is choose wisely. Not saying you shouldn't spend it, not saying you shouldn't spend part of it, but it's not that much. And, and, and we still have 50% in reserve, remember that. So that's always there for an emergency. That's with two thirds vote, we can dip into that in the future. Okay. Health fund balance. If you recall, this was the fund 
that our auditors looked at and go, oh my gosh, you got the time about $8 million or $7.5 million uh, from money that has not been spent on in our health fund. It's getting large. It was kind of a reserve safety net. So they said, really, you should get that down to about a million or a little less is about all we recommend. And we can take part of that out each year. We've been taking money out of it, but the first two years that we did it, the, the fund actually still grew. We didn't take out enough. This year, in 2022, it looks like we're going we're gonna to actually dip into that a little bit more because we've had some cases where the expenditures are going to be high this year. So that happens. That's why you have this reserve fund. But in 2023, we're taking out a little bit more money than we had the first two years, $980,000. In essence, what happens, that gets reallocated to each of the departments who have employees, and it goes to pay for their health fund and those types of things. It saves them money, and it helps the county, you know, so then we can use those funds or use other funds elsewhere. <coughs> So it's still there. The plan, if you recall, was for that fund to be depleted or not depleted, but down to that level of about a million after seven years. And I think uh, we probably would see this more based on the trend we're going, it might be eight or nine. So does each, so. each department determine how they spend those funds then when it goes back? No, time? no, I wouldn't say that. It, it's because it's coming from the health fund, it has to be used a certain way, but each department has to pay for the health of their employees, right? So it kind of goes that way, but it saves their money elsewhere, right? So they can, they have money that, that they would normally spend on healthcare is being used here. So then they have funds to apply yeah, elsewhere, so like can, salary. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So can, can, is there, can we draw this down by charging employees less for their healthcare? Would that? Yeah. You know, what we've done is, because it's about an 80 20 split, that fund is about 80% money that the county pays in, about 20, uh, you know, is, is really from employees, deductions, and those types of things. Um, we have done things like increase their health benefits, you know, orthodontia, uh, different types of coverage, better coverage, less premiums, less deductible. We have an increased premium. So we're giving our share to the employees in that way. And then the other fund, the 80%, we're using it, you know, for the county center. Okay. Um, okay, next. Oh, no, here we go. So the key takeaway, the good news is we have a balanced budget. Um, yep. Things like higher equalized value, but a lowest lower mill rate, that's good. So taxes we expect to be relatively flat in the county. Uh, we did have a modest increase in our levy because of the net new construction mostly. FTEs are down, uh, which is good in the long run. And then uh, spendable general fund balance is about $4.7 million. That is something that, you know, if you see priorities, you can spend on. Uh, I do have some recommended expenditures that have come to me that I look at and say, hey, it fits within our priorities. It's important things we've talked about before, and I've gone ahead and approved those. Okay, next page. Capital project. Oh. Yeah, so now we lost the slide. Oh, this is we did lose the slide. Yeah. Well, oh, this is in the packet. Yeah. And that's not in there. Page eleven. Um, is this the five-year capital improvement plan? Yeah, yeah. Do you have the five-year capital yeah, yeah. improvement plan? Page eleven. Okay, you got it right there. Yeah. Good. So it's not up here. It's too small anyway to read. So good call there, Doc. <laughs> Uh, you will see, I'll, I'll just point something out, 2023, and again, if a capital improvement plan, the only year, year that's really accurate is that first year, right? Because that's what we're looking at spending this year. The future, 
may or may not be complete. We may not have a good idea of what the costs are because we really focus on this year. But you'll see there that the total revenues and expenditures uh, or how we're going to spend that is $5.1 million. This is a point of reference. Last year it was 16 million. A lot of that's because of that 8 million, 8.2 million that we financed uh, and, and the building that we're remodeling over there. It would also include uh, you know, other projects like the dam, the $2 million in there. So uh, again, getting back to when I talked to the directors and we said, what type of budget are we gonna have? We're pushing caution this year, slowing down, tapping the brakes a little bit to make sure <clears throat> that we're only going after what we really need. Good? Yeah. When you say that this is <clears throat> the most accurate, it, are, can we assume that these A through F on here, the departments and everybody have sort of itemized, you've got yeah, you got those specific dollars tied to specific improvements. Yeah, those are projected costs, so that's what's been approved by a committee or the board to say that we'll spend there. Um, and the plan, you know, those future years are useful because it keeps in our mind, hey, don't forget, in three years, we've got this $2 million expense coming up, you know, in this area. So it kind of gives us uh, an idea and it helps us in next year to use. Can I interject? Sure. Yeah, so in the big, thick draft budget, about a third of the way back is the capital improvement plan, which uh, the last two meetings of the general government committee, we've seen a, a draft. And this is, uh, yet again, refined from the draft. That I did. <clears throat> okay. um, next page. Additional funding request. Two things. I'm going to show you the ones that I have provisionally agreed to, um, and and certainly you can critique or whatever. And then we'll show you uh, the things that have been discussed and bandied about amongst you before. There are topics that keep coming up, and it's an opportunity for you all to to have your pick as to what you think are a priority. And you have hard copies. The first one, the blue one, is the provisionally approved. Okay, so these are things, and you know, just give you an idea. Uh, the first one's not a big one, but it's uh, it's certainly something that I know Bob is excited about. It's a, a mapping software uh, for our zoning folks, uh, and makes a lot of sense. The treasurer, uh, she needs to upgrade her software to be in communication with the state. Uh, so that's something that, that I would highly recommend. Um, the third one there, the, the clerical support staff for Corporation Council, I've mentioned that earlier. And you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the cost, the budget cost, and then what fund. So those first three like are out of the general fund. Uh, the next two uh, from IT, and you know Scott Good has been doing a great job. I, I mean, I just want you to know that we, <laughs> he does a great job of keeping us safe, keeping our network safe, making sure that our equipment is updated. Uh, and I tell you what, he's really advancing our abilities to work in today's world. And uh, new servers, network switches, those are things that you know have to be done over time. And we're going to charge that to the asset recovery fund. And if you recall, that is a fund we have established. Um, I think it's like a couple million, $1.2 million. But what it is, it's like, as Don calls it, a family loan. So that money comes out of the asset recovery fund. But because IT is used by every department in the county, they pay back over time that loan that they got from the asset protection fund. So really it's a way for us to just use our own funds and get paid back and it does not uh, cost the taxpayer any extra money. Um, but you can go down that list. Um, deferred maintenance projects you'll see in here for facilities and here for parks. 
you know, we've talked about this and we're really, really committed to this because, uh, you know, that's why Mo wanted to stick around and enjoy this. He has a lot of demands placed on him to repair building equipment or whatever. And now we've designed this great park system and these trails and these parks. Uh, oh yeah, we got to maintain them too. So we're starting to create a fund there where he will have a year after year fund. So he doesn't have to come beg for me, you know, all the time or from you. Hey, I need to repair the windows over in the justice center. You know, this is something that if it meets the criteria, he can do. Um, the generators, this is one that I've actually, one that, uh, well, you'll see here. They, the Sheriff's Department requested three for communications towers. We thought rather than pay it all at once, maybe we can divide those three generators over time, spread them out a little bit. But you'll see in, in an additional, something you can decide on is you'll have the flexibility to, hey, let's buy all three at once, you know. But but we our thought is let's do one this year, one next year, one the following year. Because they are getting toward their end of life, but they're all functioning. So, new canine. Uh, D.D. Kennedy Pedestrian Bridge. If you recall, uh, this has been a couple of years. We looked at that bridge, and if you've been out to D.D. Kennedy, there's a walking bridge that connects the park, right? You got trails here and you got trailer there, but if you want to connect to them, you got to walk over the stream and the lake. Tracy's an expert on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought at first, could we repair it? But, uh, you know, Mo and <laughs> People have looked at it and it's like, it's crooked. You're leaning sideways. Is that what happened to you, Tracy? <laughs> Too holes for me, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and D.D. Kennedy is kind of the flagship of our parks. I mean, it's a beautiful facility. We're investing in it. Playgrounds, uh, buildings. Is there grants for that, though? Is there something? You know, do you know if that if any grants will be coming forward? Some of that bridge stuff. So we looked into the grants with DNR, and it does not meet the criteria for a grant. Okay. Um, we tried uh, last time to get a grant for it; would never reach a threshold for it. Um, DNR's response was, "It would be a very, very slim margin if we ever get it. So we'd have to wait another year to see if we get the money, and the chances are we would not." What a snowmobile out of there? <laughs> Just ask yeah. Well, yeah. they drove a car across it. Some way to yeah. 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 Um, I'll point out this last one because you know it, skid steer, you know, and um sometimes we like to go down and say, ah, why are you buying that? You know, and what's interesting, I of course I did that to Mo. I kind of hey Mo, why you why are you spending it on skid steer? We're paying more than that on renting it now because of our parks and trails and so on. So we're renting equipment so we can get this. And uh, so I provisionally approved it uh, out of the general fund. So now, I, and I don't know if any of you recall last year, but this list is considerably smaller. I think the director's did a good job of willowing, widowing us down. The next page. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, forgive me. <laughs> the, the one you've all been waiting to hear about was the mobile command center. <laughs> Funny how I just skipped right over that. <laughs> uh, this one has caught a lot of interest, and, and as it should. And I've talked to the sheriff and with Don, and we need some type of vehicle. We need a unit. We need something that in those times of need we have. We've also found uh, with COVID, we've learned that other divisions could use this as well. And, and Tanya's division, community services, has done it uh, to help folks receive health care and so on. Um, a lot of proposals, ideas bouncing up. We really did ask, you know, Don did a good job, Don Burroughs, to go take a look at what are all the options. And the sheriff said, we got to get all these options. We can't just go from having one that we think needs repair to getting a new one. So we looked at a variety of options. We looked at taking the one we have and saying, what is it that it needs? And what is it that we want that would make this thing really excellent? We 
then said, okay, instead of using ours, what if we found another one that someone turned in and, and a manufacturer dressed it up and, and made it to our, our, our liking and looked at that cost. It was a little bit more money. We then said, do we really need a big bus type vehicle? Could we go with a, a trailer and a truck? And what would that cost? So that was a little more expensive. And then we looked at, <coughs> excuse me, the new version, which was the one that we had gotten a bid at like $570,000. Uh, Tanya, I, Don went for a ride in it. We looked at it. We have under 7,000 miles on our current vehicle. Um, it is outdated. It's got some things wrong with it. But we broke out, Don broke out all the things that had to be repaired, like the generator and some other things on it. And I think the estimate now was like under $100,000. However, this is not something that we just want to have running down the road. So we thought we, we need to replace some other things like the uh, uh, <coughs> awning that come out wanted to remodel it because it's got a, a really unused restroom inside of it. We could take that out and make space. We could increase the size of a meeting room. And we looked at it and said, let's budget $200,000 and we can have that thing looking extremely good and being very functional, something we'd all be proud of. So my recommendation was to take $200,000 from the general fund to start the repair work, you know, it's running now under 7,000 miles. Uh, so the engine is in great shape, uh, probably needs some tubes and things replaced. But I think between the two divisions, if we drove it on occasion more than we have in the past, I think we can keep that thing good for at least 10 years. So that was my recommendation. You'll see an option for you all later. If you want to do more, that will be up to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next, <clears throat> these are the things that have been discussed, bandied about, where you may say, uh, you know, we kind of give the menu for you to say which of these do we like, and so on. Um, first up there is the fair. Now, the fair, I think we have budgeted about $58,000, which similar to what we've done last year or this current year and the year before but these are additional items that uh, we could do roofs uh, a pa system and a cooler i'm assuming mo that's the big refrigerator type cooler uh, for sixty eight thousand dollars and elect that includes electrical upgrades too it doesn't say it on there but if you look oh. at the actual Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. plan is on there for 68,000. Thank you. And that's on top of what you've already allocated, correct? Yes, yeah, 58,000. Um, also, facilities museum. If you recall, we uh, uh, projected about 180,000 for the bell tower to redo that uh, at the museum downtown here. The bids have come in lower than that, you know, like 100 and 20 or so, 115, So we thought one option would be to use the leftover funds for uh, the windows and to uh, remediate the coal room. Because those funds already came out of, those funds are already allocated from ARPA funds, that 180,000. Yes. And, yes. and does that, is that windows and remediate the coal room or does that include? The vestibule thing too, because you should include the vestibule. Yeah, yeah, because the on the capital improvement plan for 2023 is the remove coal room and 28,000 for the vestibule on the north side. Um, the windows, um, we that that's part of the uh, bell tower. Right, you know, the windows are for the bell tower that be part of that bell tower renovation. So I don't know if that's already. Funds that have been allocated. Well, I, I don't. The funds are in the general fund right yeah. now. So when we got the bid that came in lower, yeah, you know, the question is, well, yeah, we, we don't automatically just yeah. say, oh, no, I know that. Yeah, no, I know that. But so this should say 
this doesn't include, it includes windows and remediate coal room. Uh, and I don't know if 58,000 is the right number for that, but 58,000 is the right number for remove coal room and vestibule on the capital improvement. Plan. The 32 for the windows was not added to the list. We're waiting for that to the CIP or use other funds. Oh, okay. So somewhere that has to be that thirty-two thousand should show up somewhere. Okay, we can add that. That's for the window. Yeah. Okay. If if you want, to, if you all choose to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just so I'm following, is that fifty-eight thousand? So the hundred eighty that was allocated from Harpa funds to the Bell Tower project. Are we not looking at that as 180? We're looking at as 110 or whatever it yes. is. Now we're looking at what the actual cost is for that money, because all that ARPA fund has been, it's just sitting in our general fund, it's just there, right? So we're <clears throat> um, earmarking it so that we kind of know this was money that was given to us. And, and I, some of you have said, hey, I want to know what, you know what what is there from that. Please. This just isn't in addition to that. This is basically saying like, right. Yeah. 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 And we didn't know, about the window bid until for the bell tower until later. So that's why that wasn't part of the original ask because we didn't, we thought it was going to be 180 just for the structural stuff. Okay. I included in here um, <clears throat> per the resolution that we did not discuss the, uh, the 1.5 million for senior housing uh, and that proposal. And Malia, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's something that they could still vote in to this budget yeah. if you chose to. Um, oh, the next one. If you recall, Mo made the presentation and talked a little bit about an enhanced roof on this building. We're due for a new roof here. And I think uh, the added cost is $500,000. I did not put it in the budget. Uh, it takes it from a 25 year warranty to like a 40 year warranty, I think, something like that. Um, my feeling is 500,000 is a lot of money. Maybe not to Jay, but for us it is. And uh, no, it, it's serious. This, we just thought we think the 25 year <laughs> warranty might be good. The 40 year, yeah, you might get a better material or something. It may have some repairs you got to do once in a while on the other one. But <clears throat> we don't know exactly what this building's going to be like 40 years. The whole 25. What was the total cost, Eddie? Was two and a half? Two point well, the original one and a half? Uh, 2.1. <laughs> Payback over the years would have been an additional two point something million. So, avoided maintenance or avoided maintenance in the longevity of the roof lasting that much longer without an extra roof repair um, 20 years down the line. Okay. The uh, generators, I mentioned the generators for. The communication towers. Uh, the original request was for three. We did one. We'll do one the next couple of years. The only thought here is <clears throat> when you think inflation, whatever, would it make sense? You know, if we see, you know, whoa, these prices are going to double in the next year. Well, do we go ahead and buy them? So I put that on here as a an option if, you know, if we wanted to spend that money. And then what I call the enhanced mobile command center. Well, I budgeted. 200,000, if uh, this group said, hey, I think we should go for a different version, it would be up to an additional 380,000. Now, on the horizon, I put down at the bottom here. <clears throat> Again, just as a reminder, while well, the money's there now, and we can look at that and say, geez, we got 4.7 million, we could buy all those things there and go home and be done with it. But I again say, keep in mind, you're going to have new priorities in May. We also know the recycling center upgrade, which we from ARPA funds, we allocated $1.62 million. <clears throat> that will do some things, but it won't necessarily get us where we want to be on recycling. 
Uh, we're, we have not done a business plan yet on that, but we are getting a consultant and they're recommending probably another 1.6 million or so, right, Mo? So uh, that may be something that down the road, you may decide, let's do that. Also, I throw in campus improvements. There are things that need to be done. We know coming up here pretty soon, like the repaving of the parking lot. We <clears throat> fix those cracks about as long as we can. It's now getting to the point where pretty soon we're going to have to redo that parking lot. It really needs a big tree. That has been brought up that uh, there could be a, a solution for snow covered fleet cars, you know, a parking garage or parking uh, uh, ports. Uh, the old jail, what do we do with that? Do we need to dem demolish it, use it for storage? You know, could we do, one of the things we talked about too is enhancing the overall campus, so to speak. Uh, you know, when you look at what do young people look for in a place of employment, you know, they want to be able to move around. They want to have a sense they're on a campus or whatever. So it might be some things we can do. We even talked about, you know, having a lunch pavilion or just a patio. It wouldn't be real expensive, but out to the side of the building to let people go out either have a meeting or have a lunch or something outside. Those are the types of things you can do. It. And of course, you know, we talked about the sports complex. If in the event somewhere down the road, we want to invest in that. That's just the things right off the top of my head where we said we may have some future projects that could be expensive. The fair, the, the grandstand, you know, those types of things may come up. So keep that in mind when you look at your menu here and say, this is what, you know, we should do. I got a question. Um, I can't remember how much was of the ARPA funds is allocated towards um, internet with Lakeland? One point one million. Okay. And was there I had heard through talking to somebody at Lakeland, is there any truth to the possibility that that's coming back to us? That it never left us for one. Uh, but I mean as far as how we've got right. it earmarked is allocated. Right. Probably uh very shortly, if not this year, early next year, we will probably recommend either a change in that resolution on how those funds are to be used or we can reallocate those funds. Now, we've made great progress on broadband. Uh, I mean, our county, our mapping that we did set up where are areas of biggest need, and then we got those areas of biggest need addressed through a grant process. I'll say that part of the reason we had success with the grant process, or Lakeland did, is because of the partnership that we demonstrated by saying we'll contribute up to this much money to help in that. Lakeland has said, Thank you. Your support helped. We got the grant. We may not, we don't necessarily need that money. Not that they don't need it, they'd like it, but the 500 foot drop that, that, that we put in the resolution that they had to pay up the 500 feet drop, they said make it cost prohibitive. Their feeling was that it would cost more than what they received. Now, if you talk to your neighbors though, or if you talk to people about their broadband or their internet, they'll say, I don't have it. I can't get it. That's because we got the main lines out there, but there's still a lot of people that maybe the road over there has it, but their road doesn't. So the next step may be, can we change that resolution that would encourage not just Lakeland, but the small one, Starwire, Namor Retail, and all these others to do kind of the edging out into those neighborhoods that are close, but don't have it, so that we could get Complete coverage sooner rather than later. Lakeland won't even give people bids to bring it off the main roads into their home. Right. You can't even get them to give a bid. They're dropping it more down, not too far from our house. They're doing it right now. Can't even get a bid from them to bring it into our road. So the point being, though, I, I see your point. Right now, that million dollars is not being spent. We can still alter it and incent internet service providers with that money. To get more people covered, or we could change change the usage of it all together. Do we know is the state giving out more grants down the road this coming year? Do we know? There are some grants I think I just saw, <clears throat> but I don't know to what extent or how soon. Starlink is only twenty three thousand dollars a month. 
So with that, you can ask questions. You can look at the uh, menu items on there. If you have any concerns or recommendations, now's the time to, to hash them out. What, what was the number on the recycling center again? Over the 1.6 was it 1.8 home? Earlier it up 1.5. 1 over over the 1.6, right? Correct. Over mm -hmm. And that was to do it the way originally envisioned. Correct. What they recommended for capacity. Right. I mean, we addressed that back in resolution 5421. We basically said that you know, we're going to do what's necessary and reasonable to upgrade the facility, ensure that the success and service for all the full time future, future improvement is here for full county. So you know, we committed that in a resolution. And that's why I have a hard time understanding how it got down there. And all of a sudden, 1.5 million for senior housing got up there. Yeah. That confuses me because we all know what the number was 1.5. I think we toured it. You might share. I, I will be glad to share what I saw. So I asked Mo to give me a tour um, because you can't vote on something unless you've toured the facility. For anybody who has not toured that facility, I strongly suggest you take a tour. The people that are working there deserve better. It's horrible. Literally horrible. We owe it to those people to make a better facility. I'm just saying. I left there angry. It makes you sick. Literally. I totally agree with you. I don't know how they do it every day. They come to work, they do the job, they don't deserve that. We're lucky to have them. It's a, it's a, the whole thing is an eyesore when you, you come into the county and you drive down the main yeah. highway oh. edge, and it's awful. The whole thing is oh, awful. Man. My question is, any of this take in any of our overrun? Because we already know we're going 246 over on the building right now. Uh, is there any other overruns? Did Mo have some of the vehicles? Uh, did we, are we budgeting up a couple dollars a gallon for fuel? That isn't going to come down for snow removal and stuff. Is that in here already? Is that built in? Yeah. And most projected budgets for equipment and so on, those cost of those items. But how about the ones this year for us? Did they go over to? Well, did we, I don't know what we're getting this year, but I don't think did any of those. I thought he got a couple of no, wow you mean in 2022? Yeah. Yeah. So those overruns are right. So the still. overrun of the building, which now we're projecting 246,000. Um, we do have a couple of fleet cars coming in. Are they over? They're not over. Um, the highway overages for the heavy equipment and trucks. Um, I won't know the over and under that until I see my revenues at the end of the year, um, whether I can cover those costs or not. Um, actually, the, the cost of a truck is is up significantly from last uh, 2021. Um, but we're just um, we won't. We just uh, received the chassis from 2021 building those trucks, but we're still out. 18 months on a truck. Well, fuel, what did that do to you? About 30% on the fuel part? Fuel is, is um, fuel is calculated as an inventory item. I don't, I don't have a line item that I just buy fuel and increase that line item. Um, it's based off of um, when we when we do work for others and ourselves, we charge ourselves the equipment rate. That rate has changed quarterly if fuel moves 2% or more. So in theory, you're supposed to recover that fuel cost back with your charges back from equipment, um, but there's a lag in that. So it's done every quarter. So if it jumps over 2%, the state adjusts those rates and get that money back. Um, so we try to maintain, um, again, the big caveat on that naturally is how severe our winter is gonna be. For a light winter pushing less snow, 
will have less fuel costs. The average for the highway, about 110,000 gallons of uh, diesel a year. So when that moves three, four dollars, it's a big impact. Um, but we count on that uh, equipment rate to try to recover some of that. And again, we won't know those costs until April when we're closing our books to see how our revenues came in um, on our equipment use. I have a question on uh, back on the investing in our team total rewards thing. So on this one that says rewarding increased um, responsibility pay grade moves to seven employees, is that seven employees? Um, I don't know exactly how to say this in all levels of the organization, not just like manager. Is it like oh no, what entry was, and yeah, and, it was all different oh, okay. range. Yeah, and then the other question I have is sort of conceptual on this when we're talking about. Hey, and are we are we making sure that we're bringing everybody up at the same, or are we bringing whatever yeah. some people up faster than others, and then then we have these people down here that are coming along later? It, it's a couple of things. The philosophy of a pay in the past has been uh, everybody gets the same raise. Okay, moving forward, till you get a certain part, get up to a certain point above your you know, up in the upper echelons of your range of that job, and then you don't get the merit increase. Then you just get the cost of living increase. So there is a limit. So I know uh, one thing that has been suggested because you might have a young person that's very good in their not young, but say a newer person very good in their job, and <clears throat> they don't uh, they're not making nearly as much as someone who's been in the job for twenty years. Now, some would say that's good reason for that, and others may say, hey, if they're doing the same job, should they be closer? So there are some things that, that we will consider for next year uh, to set, you know, instead of that 2% merit, maybe the people high up in the range uh, only get a 1.7% merit, and those down in the lower hands, if they're doing a good job, to get 2.3%. So there are some things we can do. We're not ready to do that yet. Uh, one of the things that this commit board asked us to do last year was to develop a uh, bonus structure, a performance award. It's a way to recognize those top performers and get more money regardless of, of their job or their uh, experience or whatever. And we've been working on that, however, what we found was that we are not ready to do that until we have a good performance appraisal system in place. Something that, and, and we coach our folks so we can differentiate performers and can proudly say and, and boast about to, to our colleagues, this person deserves more because they did the absolute best. And to do that, we got to have a performance appraisal where we're, we're differentiating people uh, specifically so that we can we can do that. So there are a couple of ways we're going to address that. One may be that reverse uh, merit increase system, uh, but part of it will be based on merit at some point. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're rewarding the people who are only here three to five to seven, even 10 years, making sure that they stay with us. Yeah. And, you know, again, that's why we also look at uh, comparators. And in many cases, we feel we felt very good about our pay compared to other counties and other types of jobs. We got to compete against other types of businesses as well. If you lose people, but uh, you know, part of our job is to, to make sure we stay ahead of the curve. What part of this will fold into that job study that you're going to get? Yeah, to? that wage study will clearly define <laughs> where we're low and where we're high. And then some folks have expanded responsibility. Yeah, <laughs> that's those uh, seven people who got the rate. They, you know, they maybe took on some uh, management responsibilities. They've got an office where they're in charge, where their experience has made them, you know, you're in charge of all these people here. So and there's a complaint from their management. That's right. Anybody else? Go ahead. So Realistically, I think you said there's about 4.72 million that's room to play with above the 50 percent. So the 246 thousand that we're budget that we're thinking we're over on 
building. Is that quarter of a million going to lower that number when that gets paid? Because this is what we have, and if we're, we're 250,000 over on the on the building project, we're really only looking at four and a half million dollars because that 247,000 is going to have to come from the general fund. No different than if Mo is over on highway. That if any other department is over anywhere, that's going to come out of this 4.7 million realistically before we spend any of it anywhere right. else. It's got to cover the overages of 2022, regardless of what department. That will probably be paid, yes, in 2023. So. Right. All right. Anyone else, or do you want to call me on my error? The error is the fact that I didn't do the resolution. Oh, yeah. You skipped one. Yeah, you skipped number skipped eight. I usually get caught on that immediately, but that was on purpose. Well, it was to see if you kept I thought you thought made an amendment. I think you do, it's own personal amendment. Okay. Can, can I just ask one, one yeah, quick question? On, um, uh, it has to do with the personnel. So when I'm looking at, for instance, I, I grab like land management or land information, and I'm looking now on expenditures personnel. So personnel, that, that is that the wage and benefit line, or or, or is the benefit um, under, come under the professional? No, that would cover wage and Benefit. Wage and benefit, yeah. right? And then professional services, there's that. They're that not be on everything. Consultants, okay. Um, oh, okay. Engineers, so engineering. Here. Hiring engineers. Okay, great. Uh, supplies and expenses. I'm, I guess, I, like, um, business role, like a PNE, travel and travel and expenses. So, do we do, we do like uh, any? You know, professional conferences or yes, each of the directors may include that in their budget to say we want to develop our you know, send our certain number education. of education. Okay. Yeah, we do. We still, by the way, the uh, included we started it last year was the tuition assistance program, and we budgeted 75,000 last year. We did not spend that much. We've actually lowered that this year, but we did have several employees take advantage of it, and we feel good about they're getting it in degrees that are relevant to their jobs or expanding their opportunities, so we think it's a good investment. So those are discretionary funding that is controlled by the department heads? Discretionary. Or there's a no slush fund. Well, I, I didn't <laughs> say that, but uh, sure. you got in my head. Because <laughs> um, I just don't see, I don't see where that, yeah. that could follow it on here. Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it, it's in there somewhere where they're, you know, you know, I have a uh, contingency fund, whatever's left over. Um, and, and I've used it in the past where an issue comes up, let's say, uh, the trail in Sterling or the ATV, UTV. If if something came up quickly and said, hey, we got to have somebody go out there and draw a path for us in my contingency fund, I could say, hey, I've got enough money. It's within the certain guidelines of how much I can spend. I can hire a consultant to go out or do an RFP and have to pay him to go out. That's always been there. Do that. Yeah. So that's just the money that, that I. <laughs> Here, got one more question. Right. Since when do we when do we thrash out the economy? Right when now. This is it. Yeah. So we got to do this time. Right. You, if you see something that you want to pay for, or if you see something you don't want to pay for now, the time to do it, because the changes you make here tonight, we insert into these this document, we retype everything, re-input everything. I guess showing my age. Um. And uh, and then that is what gets published, and we have a public hearing on it next month. So we entertain motions for changes now. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, 
only fund the recycling center to the point of $1.5 million to complete the project. Just like I was telling one of my fellow board members, just can't believe the way we leave stuff half done. Yeah, and you come back to it all the time. So I'd like to make a motion that we take 1.5 million of the general fund, which should be ARPA funds, would be available. Correct me if I'm wrong. ARPA funds are available for that as well. And yeah, it, it's basically general fund, but we put an asterisk by a certain right. amount. So that's that's included in my motion that the not come out of the general fund be out of ARPA. Motion. I'll second that. Second. Any more discussion on it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, is that was that in our uh, resolution already though too? Uh, the one that I read? Yes. It just said in the resolution that uh the way it read, whereas capital improvements, maintenance improvements could be made using First, uh, of undesignated funds uh, without impacting the county tax. And there, then it goes, therefore, you know, we commit, the supervisors commit to using ARPA funds for the necessary and reasonable upgrades to the recycling center. I mean, we didn't realize what the cost was going to be when we put the 1.62 in there. The first, the first, yeah, the first one. Yeah. But now we know what it's going to be. Yeah. And it's right here, we told the people that's what we're going to do. So, you know, I, it's a little fuzzy, the additional 1.5. Right now, we're in the early stages. We haven't, you know, this is what they're projecting. So, obviously, it could be a little higher, it could be a little lower. Well, I don't know if I can roll that all into one motion, but I mean, generally, that's going to get us to where we have the right volumes and storage and all this that stuff. That should be full that we up. talked about. Did you just have a not not to exceed number? Well, that wouldn't work, right? Yeah, I just put 1.5. So I don't know what the exact going to be all number will be. You know, all we can do is go by what most research is. Right. You know, and he's consulted now with people and they've given these numbers, and that's so you're comfortable with that though that between the 1.62 and the 1.5 that's going to take care of it so pretty gonna, much so we'll get the building expanded to what we need yeah. a new sign out front katie said yeah. she'd do it for free did you carry a call for your question on favor all right all right oh same sign just one. Any more? Anybody else? Just in case, I just want to clarify. So, well, you said earlier that with regard to the senior housing resolution, that that was essentially dead as a result of that vote. Is that after tonight? And this is the opportunity? This is your opportunity. Okay. And then, if not tonight, right, because that other resolution can never come back. That resolution was really just formalizing a vote if somebody were to make a motion like this. A resolution. Different resolution. Right. While you're thinking about that, can I just ask a question? This? Okay, can we go back to the command center? So for $200,000, are we getting something that all the directors say works for their needs? Yeah, well, the, the, the two remodel, directors remodeling the existing yeah thing the two directors that went through it you know and, and they they pressed me yeah i agree with this can we change this and and but the first nine hundred thousand was simply the mechanical stuff um and yeah, I think I think we will have a very fine command center. Okay. Okay. Yeah. With vintage license plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can do that. Go ahead. So I'd like to make, make the motion to uh I would like to move the uh, fair 
facilities, the rub, the cooler, the PA, and, and I think the electrical was completely different. Yeah. Uh, I would like to move that, that we do that, put it on. The fair one? The fair one, fine. I'm not close to that. 68. How do we do that? I second your motion. Mm -hmm. Right on, I do. Just a little feedback on that. Uh, you know, the PA system warns everybody if there's a storm coming, they had it, they had it, they went through that here a couple of years ago. And it's just not clear on the ground. I mean, you know, people aren't properly warned there. So I mean, I think it's I think it's well spent money on the PA and the system. At the um uh, the Wisconsin or the Polk County, I think they say that was coming in. Tour, Polk County Tourism Conference, the fair came up as the county jewel. Okay, so um, in addition to PA for safety purposes, um, you know, announcing events and stuff like that is important. And um, and I, I just I just think it's a it's just positive. So all this, uh, if you gotta feel good about spending money, this is this is where you. Where it's going to increase tourism. It's already a jewel, so let's keep it that way or make it better. Thank you, Chair. Uh, on, on that electrical, which you mentioned, I remember when, uh, when I was on about five years ago, uh, electrical was done to a certain point, and they, she wanted to do it farther, but it was cut off right there. Mm -hmm. So that electrical mentions that's in there that's something that was already planned and now we can fund it and finish it. Vince, are you clear on what is there on what don't we'll keep it track. Yeah. <coughs> it's what's right in the capital plan right here. Yeah it's it's listed in that it's not all it's not that's it's, not it's totally not, listed right there. It's not safe, separated. No, no. That's but it, sure. it is in here. Mm -hmm. The number is right, but it's just not saying everything. So, go ahead. Amy was talking about the command center. I just want to back up because I, I don't know where that ended between you and this. You never had a vote. Yeah, what I was saying. Uh, she will. Well, let's Our, do this one first. Let's do the do an order. We're on the fair. Let's do the fair. Yeah, I think we've had yeah. a motion and a second, and now we're discussing. Or yeah. There was on the fair, yeah, on the fair, right? All right. I'll go with question. Anything else? All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Both same side. I just wanted now, to back up on the yeah. command center because I guess the only fear I have is I had a personal tour of the command center. And that seemed like a lot of repair that day. So I'm wondering if we don't go the 200,000 is to repair the command center, but I think we should go higher to take a better option if it's needed. That's kind of what was in there because they said that the bid that we currently had was around well, 100,000. That's what I'm trying to say, go that. I wasn't sure if Amy was talking the 200 repair. Well, he, Vince said the $100,000 was the bid for the repairing the current stuff. And then he threw another 100,000 to sort of outfit it for what the directors needed. So I think I'm comfortable with that. If the staff gives the report with back. 200? Yeah. No motion. I believe our chair, I believe our chair's department, Donna, is that what you agreed to that we could be satisfactory? And this is that we don't need to approve that because it's already approved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make what? a motion to to do the generators. Uh, and I think that is two right there, 67, because on the other one it's 33 each. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the price is going up on those fast. Right now. The generator stuff. So I think we should buy the two. So I'm, I would like to say on that line that we do the two the 67. issue for the 67. Well, well, so just, just to be clear, 
Did you already say one on your? Yeah. And they, this would be the two additional, so we do all three? Yes. Yeah, we do all three, so it's done. Right. So did you, was that a motion? I'm sorry. That was a motion. I'll motion. second that. All right. You want to repeat the motion? Was to approve this line for the generator. Yeah, just seven. seven for 67,000 that we have all three. Is that a second? Yes. Yeah. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All the same thing. Yes. Um, I'd like to add, uh, take a motion, additional ARC GIS license for the staff that we support for $1,600. I'd like to make a motion on the museum. Um, the, the bid that Mo got for the windows, that's part of that bell power. Uh, I mean, they're going to do all that structural stuff. If those windows don't get replaced, the structural stuff isn't going to last. The rain's going to keep coming in. And um, and then rem remediating the coal room and the other thing, the part of that fifty eight thousand was also building a vestibule by the north entrance because you can stand by that north entrance door and the wind just comes right through the snow comes right through they tape it up it still comes in there and that's not one of the doors that's being replaced um, that we got the yeah. part of that paid for. <laughs> to do the, the remove the coal room and construct the vestibule and then do the windows and the bell tower. Yeah, thank you. Total of 58. Total, total of 80 because the 58, the 32 for the windows is, was not included in here. So you want to include it to 90? Uh, 80. 80. Oh, no, it's 90, 90, 90. You're right, Dr. Wolf. Right. What was the tower initially? What did we allocate for that? 180, and it came in about, we initially allocated 180, and it did came in at 108. 108. 108. I, would, I would second that, Rita. would go along with what he said. We were right. doing things kind of after. The proposal is 32 plus. I mean, both those 50 plus 32,000. Yeah. Additional. Uh, could have done right. Yeah. 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 Any more discussion on that? Just kind of a little. It's still got it straight in my mind. We did the bell tower for 180. Correct. And the bid came back at 108. 108. So the one. 80 was already our yeah. so uh i think this we don't need a resolution well I was, i'm just trying to figure that out the, the bid will cover uh, all but how much 18,000 18, so shouldn't this motion be to increase the budget amount for the bell tower 18,000 well I, I would say no, and only because it would be, it almost seems a little too loose with the money. If if we set up to 180,000, the bid comes in at 108. Use it and up so then somebody goes, oh, well, let's just spend the rest doing this. So I'd rather us be specific as to what we're bidding the money on. Yeah. Just seems it's, to make sense. Well, it's like Sharon said, I mean, when you, when you go in and they start tearing stuff apart, they can find things. That need to be fixed. You can tear, polish a turd by adding a roof and not fixing the windows, which are a root cause. Yes. Yeah. Are there so any I other think I would think that the windows will be in. That means no, not till they're, they're going to. They've got some work on the roof and gutters allocated in 2025. Otherwise, no, because they they've done a good job keeping up with some of the interior stuff. What's the um, What's the coal room story? Well, it used to, that's how they used to heat that building. Yeah. And that's where the coal came in. Yeah. And they stored it. And all it is, it just, water just comes in there all the time. Oh, so it's it's causing humidity in that building, which is bad for the artifacts and stuff. And the, Mo had estimates on, done on what's the best thing to do, try to fix the 
the water issue and we don't use it for anything? Or do we just get rid of that part that's a, just a icky old room that nothing, it's not used for anything except to keep water, you know, because the water just comes <laughs> yeah, so in. Right yeah. And are we current and confident then with the 58 and the 32? Is that your motion? Yes. yes. That I complete. Yeah. 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 Any more discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. I would like to see the justice center roof improvement. That was about 40 years, right, Mom? Yes. I mean, what will this building look like? You're exactly. You know, I can't predict. You know where this building is going to be at in 40 years. There could be some storm damage, and and maybe you know there's always that possibility that it be increased with insurance or something. I, I think our 25 years is our obligation. What is it, Mo? About 20 years now. The for a rubber main membrane roof, it's 20 years. 20. <laughs> Double. You double double. Well, what's the motion? Well, I make a motion that we had add that additional to get us the 40 years. What's the additional? Well, this yeah. one, okay. That's it. Oh, when God. was this building built? 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, black outside the door. We got a motion to, to, uh, Except this five hundred thousand dollars for the increase in the uh, the roof. I'll second. We have a second. For purposes of discussion, go ahead. Anybody want to discuss? Well, just I just I'm not I'm not sure I'm getting the clearest answer on if we put a 40, 40 year roof on this building, will this building still be something exactly. that exactly right? I'm not sure. What is the answer to that, Mel? You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Can we can we just stay with this building in 40 years? Um, I, I guess I guess the answer to that is we're just renovating a 1974 building, so I would I'd say the chances of it lasting that long, and I would hope the sheriff's department would still be here and functioning as it should be. So we're going to have to. 2070. It's really sci fi, man. <laughs> Mo, do you remember off the top of your head the cost of the 20 year option? Yeah. Total? The 20 year option? Yeah. The, the yeah. membrane? Uh, 2.1. So it's 2.1 versus 2.6 for twice the mm -hmm. life. So, I mean, return on investment as far as being prudent in that way, that would be the way to go because you're saving yourself. And is it based on the, the membrane thickness? Correct. It's so a multi layer versus a, a single layer membrane, which is subject to scale damage and other. Perfect. Do you remember so all no those brain. details from that day? It's no brain. I, it's coming okay. back to me. But... Any more discussion? All the questions. All in favor? Signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Happen. It's passed. Aye. Mr. Chair, I have another question. Another. So, um, on the topic of the senior housing, so Health and Human Services have spent a lot of time talking about housing and the crisis of housing that we have right now in Fort County. And I don't know, I don't know this senior housing project. I, I, um, what I would love is if we had a number figured out that we could somehow support it in this 23 budget, some sort of, can we put a placeholder in our budget for housing of some sort or, um, or should we just put a, what, 
or it may do it as a priority. And give, what? It, give it Getting as a priority. priority. When we do the priorities, it should be a priority. But if we recognize that it's a priority, then aren't we recognizing it's a priority now? Not necessarily. We don't know if it will be that. Right. So that's that's the part that we that's miss out. Part, that's yeah. the part that we miss out on tonight is we get no discussion on it. I think we have an opportunity now to discuss it. I mean, at least so that some of us. Yeah. Is there anything what we need to do months? procedurally to discuss it, or no? It's it's part of the on here, right? Okay. On here, so I mean, I'd like to have some kind of presentation that you know, who's the players here? I mean, is there bankers involved? Contractors involved? Investors involved? Mr. Chair, haven't you been going to meetings on this? We have. I've seen. So I can give the high level on that. If, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, so the resolution that was drafted comes from the EDC effort to address housing in general. So Terry from the EDC had told me, the director of EDC told me that there had been a previous effort to address housing in a more general way. And the feedback to him was that it needed to be a more targeted effort. And so what he did is he came back with an effort to address senior housing with the idea that by, because we've identified that in Polk County, the availability for senior housing is at zero. And the wait list for the available senior housing is long. Chair, do you have something? Yep, I do. Um, uh, and St. Croix, that statement doesn't hold for some all communities. And St. Croix Falls, as fast as they're building homes that seniors are buying, I mean, it's they call it Little Cushing, one of the areas, because so many people have sold their farms and moved into the senior two-bedroom, two-bath, one-level homes. And as fast as they're building them, they're selling them. So I, I have, that, that's the part, what I see, you know, when we say this, do you have staffs to support that claim? There's a lack of senior housing options. How yes. do we know that? Because we've got a study that has been presented to us three different times in general government that shows the different senior housing facilities, their zero occupancy or their zero vacancy and the length of their wait list. So, and the thing that you just said that as soon as things are being built, they're also being filled doesn't change the fact that what I just said that, um, that there's no vacancy doesn't change. Private enterprise should take care of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, supply, supply and demand, demand should drive yeah. that. Yeah. In a perfect yeah. world, it would, except the developers have communicated that there's reasons that they're not building in our area. So, like, yes, if all of the things that we do in government should be taken care of by, in a perfect world, should be taken care of by private industry. But in the real world, they're not. So anyway, to go back to what was asked, and I'm sorry, I'll be more succinct with this then, is that what the the involvement of the people who came together for the resolution was we had discussions with several different builders, Derek builders being the primary one, and Derek had conversations with other builders about what types of incentives would incent them to build in areas like the municipalities in Polk County and the mill towns and Balsam Lakes of the world where they otherwise wouldn't. <coughs> Where they otherwise wouldn't because of proximity to, you know, uh, medical facilities, like any number of reasons why they don't choose to build in these places. We were trying to figure out how to incent them to build here. And so we worked with developers and then we also worked with lenders and worked with um, West Central Regional Planning to talk about the implementation of a program like that. Um, worked with some real estate involved people. So we had a number of stakeholders that were involved in coming up with the plan. Uh, that's how the program got put together and we got to where we were. So what would the 1.5 get us? 1.5 would get us the fund that would be made available to developers to apply um, for up to $10,000 per unit, up to 400,000. Per build. <clears throat> so potentially could be three builders would get all most of the money. Right. And and West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning has agreed that they could manage the fund. And I'm on that commission. So 
out of if you're if they're managing like when they managed the Main Street bounce back program, they started out with 1.52 million five million and sixty they charged sixty thousand to administer that. So out of if they did the same thing, I would think uh, for this program it'd be similar. So there'd be 1.44 million available. Um, so that potentially could, you know, you, it gets half of that gets paid back because they get ten thousand dollars, but half of it gets paid back, and so they're really only getting five thousand dollars, and they have ten years to pay it back. So the county, at the most, would get seventy-two thousand a year for ten years if all that one point four million was actually, you know, it was gone, and and um, and then my concern was. If, because it can be rentals. They can build rentals and then rent them. Well, that happened in Centuria. Um, I know you don't like to hear that. And well, we have seven that. Yes, but this, this group hasn't heard that. No, we've if, already discussed the solution to that. Well, I don't I haven't heard of a solution yet that makes sense. Um, you know, there's uh, they they build rentals, impact seven built rentals and not for seniors, but for anybody. And um, and then they change the rules around around 501c3s, and it's easier now to get approved for 501c3. So they became a 501c3. All the tax base is gone in Centuria for all that impact seven housing, and not only Centuria, but all through the state, all through the state of Wisconsin. Some of the cities like Racine lost over two million dollars in taxes because um, they still have to pay for fire, um, police protection. All of that, all of the services still have to be provided to the people, even though they're not getting any taxes back. So there's no there's no guarantee that's going to what's going to stop them from becoming a 501c3 after the fact. And then how do you determine the effectiveness? Will you be tracking each unit built? How do you know what we really need is housing for workers to come here? That's what we're ultimately about, right? Affordable and housing. Affordable housing. This doesn't get us this. We're talking now, This be, it, it's not affordable housing now, it's housing for seniors. So the seniors, with the thought being, seniors are gonna sell their homes and then young couples are gonna come in and wanna work, live and work in this community. Well, how many young couples can come in and buy a, the same house that a senior worked their whole life to get? They aren't gonna be able to afford those houses. So are we looking to bring more seniors into the county or are we looking to bring more workers into the county? Frustrating part about that is, is that again we've addressed that not everybody has an eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar home that they're selling, and we've done the studies and we have shown that at our last Gen Gov meeting, it's a little bit frustrating because all of these things were addressed directly, where we gave three different core examples of the types of homes that have been made available by people who have raised their hand and said I would sell my home. The highest of which was at three hundred twenty five thousand dollars, and that was at the peak of home valuations in the last few months, and. We did the math on uh, talking about average or medium, medium income of households in the county with couples, for example. And the math works out where they can afford that level of home. Mm -hmm. So yes, when you're talking about people who all of a sudden have a million dollar house, no, that's also not the target of this program. So where we're at, I feel like we can see that there are questions, doubts, what have you, about what's going on. My question would be, is I, starting way back at the beginning, because I jumped into the middle of this pro process with EDC and jumped on board with what was going on there, and I can see where the board is at. So I'm kind of playing the conduit between EDC and the county board. So my question would be, does the county board recognize housing as an issue when it comes to available workforce with attracting and retaining people living and working in Polk County. Is that something that we see as a problem that we want to address? And is something in housing, whether it be senior housing or another effort, what we want to do to address that problem? And if so, how can we take what we just talked about or something completely new and create something that addresses the problem? Or is it that we don't think, or is it that this group thinks that housing is not an issue and it's not something that we need to tackle in the foreseeable future? Mr. Chair, can I make a comment? Go ahead. 
I'm, I'm on the the Polk County Housing Authority, and uh, we have a meeting once a month over at the uh, Walton Lake Apartments here. So everybody's welcome. It's uh, third Thursday every month at nine o'clock, and uh, I I asked our our administrator uh, Jennifer Cockroft at the last meeting uh, about the availability, the waiting list, or whatever. And we have nine units in the county at uh, Milltown, Alonso, or Balsam Lake. Uh, yeah. I think one of them, I think they're in eight communities. One of them has two. And I said, uh, how big a waiting list do you have? And she said, we have a waiting list in, in all of, for all our uh, units. And she said, some of them, some of them there probably can. Uh, but there's waiting list and all. I said, do you think that will, as a whole county housing unit, will ever expand? And she said, there, there isn't any talk about it because of the lack of money. Now that's low income housing, right? Um, whole county housing. Whole county yeah, housing. yes. Yeah. But so I agree. We need we need just, worker housing. So my thought is, why do we? For demographic, why do we do just seniors? Why not housing? Mm -hmm. So what I was told, we're, we're trying to take and yeah. just take one. Why not take everybody? So two, because two different soon things. you do that in a neighborhood or anything, they want. Uh, Here, I just want to direct. You're kind of getting into a very large philosophical discussion, and bring it back to the budget. If you're not going, if nobody's going to make a motion to include something about this in the budget, I think what you can say is this is a topic to continue a discussion on, maybe have a presentation to the full board. Nothing would stop you from in the future with a two thirds majority amending a budget if you found that there's a really awesome program out there. But I, I just, the whole philosophical isn't really on the agenda, just whether or not you're gonna do something in the budget. We've got a lot to do. Well, okay, what has happened is, St. Craig Falls did that. They tried to just do specific <laughs> things. Aren't I again? Maybe again? I was thinking about the motion at the end. I'm not going to do it. All right. I was going to keep it the whole time. And then you have the budget item that want to be addressed. So you know we're at 2.225 million. Uh, uh, Without all the overrun. Yeah. yeah. So the demolition of the old jail, does it need to be destroyed and it couldn't be used for, oh. for something? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Or the vehicles or the uh, senior level. No, or like the covered cafeteria. You know, I yeah. creatively thinking of how you can reuse it's that. Well, that would be yeah. Yeah. Those items are need to make a motion. I know they are. <laughs> make motion down here. That's just to keep in mind for the future as you decide how much you yeah, spend. Yeah, credit card. We're moving on. Yeah. Ross, get us on track. Anybody else want to uh, do a little bit Then going back to the resolution. Are there any more? No. All right, we're going on to resolution 4522. We need a motion. Move. Second. Any question on this? Any discussion? Does the motion include all the changes right. that were just made? Right. Okay. Right. Focus. Oh, yes, yes. yeah. More discussion? Question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Same sign. Resolution 4422. This resolution is a lobbying resolution. It is recommended from the Environmental Services Committee that deals with tax deed foreclosures. 
It is also recommended by the Wisconsin Counties Association attorney in general in concept. And it's also recommended by the Treasurer, uh, County Treasurer's Association and our Treasurer, Amanda Nissen. There was a change in the law that arguably was to prevent <coughs> homeowners' interest in equity in their home when taken by a county uh, by way of tax deed foreclosure. But there are so many ambiguities within the law that it leaves a lot of questions, a lot of open liability. So all, nearly all of the counties are asking the legislature to fix it. That's what this resolution is. And I'll be taking that resolution to move past it. I'll be taking it to the Wisconsin County. Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. More discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Both same sign. Uh, any appointments by the county oh, board? That really 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 oh. Uh, Update on the county court. Oh, yeah. um, I can just tell you that uh, per your direction, the next county clerk uh, needs to be appointed by the board. And we put out an ad and have received as of yesterday afternoon seven applicants. And so my next question for you is, is how do you want to proceed? Do you, in other words, would you want staff? Myself, you to vet some. Would you like all the information of all the candidates? Uh, do you want a committee to then review it, or do you want it to come back to the full board in November? Go ahead, Kim. My thought is have each other. I mean, like, can you any other employee like we've done before? And, and then bring that uh, one or two or whatever, give it down to the board. Yeah. Right. HR would probably bring back all minimally qualified candidates. Um, and the difference between other jobs and this one is that, you know, you determine the qualifications because you get to a point to fill the remainder of the term. So I think what, what we could do is have HR assign a few subject matter experts to review, rank them you know, like maybe even in sections. So you're not saying our first choice, second choice, but these are like the top tier. These are, you know, what, or if there are concerns, like they have a felony and they couldn't hold the office. I mean, things that would exclude them, but they could bring those and that way you could then decide. I also think assigning it to general government because they fall within that division and having general government maybe make a recommendation and they can take a harder look at the applications that way. It's not 15 of you all reviewing applications. And they have to be a resident of Polk County. Or willing to move into the county by the time they would be appointed, yes. Is that a, uh, do we need a motion for that or, I think or we a consensus? Can, do you need a motion for that? How are we going to? Consensus. consensus. We, general oh. consensus. Put it on the general government agenda with those. <clears throat> all right. General consensus. Did everybody understand what uh, council told us? Go ahead. Oh, you did. You're just saying, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have one question. Go ahead, uh, Vince. I don't remember if you had mentioned anything about this. Has that position ever been just always a, a, an appointed position or a, a hired position or? I know it is. Has it statute. It's the state statute. State yeah. statute that the county clerk has to be elected? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. But then when the absence, then if there's not a yeah. deputy clerk, we can. Yeah. Okay. Generally, uh, anybody that agrees with the, uh, the counselor, uh, signify by just saying aye. 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 Anybody disagree with her? No, or her only piece. Somebody did one. I think we got the, I think we got the, the idea that what we're going to do from now on resolve this problem. Number 12, appointments by the county board chair that are none. County administrator none. has zero. The county board chair's report is, I think, we pretty well understand everything. I do in reference to what 
What's happening in the county because we discussed it and discussed it in, in the last few meetings, so there's no reason for me to elaborate on anything that I don't understand any better than you. Uh, the administrator probably could do the same thing. Right? You might have different. Yeah, just kind of a few things. First of all, the status of the clerk's office uh, got a lot of change, right? Lisa leaving. Ivana, who is our primary deputy clerk, uh, will be leaving soon for a very important matter. And she'll be out of the office for a while. Uh, but so Ivana, the other deputy that we have is Katie Schultz. She is our new deputy clerk. And in addition to that, because they're shorthanded at a very important time, we have Anastasia Smith, who is currently our receptionist in the main building, is going to step in and help with the clerk's office. Tammy Peterson, who is here tonight, uh, is going to take on more responsibilities. Uh, when Shibana leaves, she'll be kind of the uh, oversight or the acting person there to uh, lead that organization because she's got the experience of doing this uh, many times over. And uh, in addition, the election, in addition to the folks I've mentioned, uh, Tammy and Gail Wasberg from the Veterans Office will be working on election night. We'll oversee the canvassing that's required after the election. Lisa Ross has, or has said she will help on election night as well, so we're happy to have her back for that. And uh, that's what I have on the clerk's office. So we're working to get people filled that know, you know what they're doing so that we can uh, keep things running as smoothly as possible. Secondly, Northwood Tech signage. If you saw the new sign, it's out the front. Uh, Northwood Tech came to me a while back and said, we need better signage. And I said, yeah, you do. We want you to have something signage. And they agreed to provide that signage and put uh, Polk County top filling uh, so that they, you know, just that big sign out there is nice, the brick one. It's not lit up real well. People don't notice. It. And I think this new bright, bright sign along the highway there is, is going to be helpful. Um, good news for GAM. They were voted. It's a nice thing. Uh, Amory's best nursing home slash senior living facility and the best place to work. So congrats to uh, wow. Dana Reese and her. And then finally, as a reminder, equestrian season on Stour Trail is open. Not opened October 1st till November 18th. Closes right before uh, the gun season. Good night. Good idea, right? That's all I want. Okay. <laughs> Supervisor, the uh, reports, the reference to meeting tonight. Uh, I've been to uh, every spring and fall as a representative to the county. We have uh, uh, meetings at uh, Stephen Point, uh, legislative uh, human service our, our committee, basically. And one thing I wanted to bring out, and Jay, Town uh, Chairman, and everybody lives in the Township or something. Um, what's going to be changing, they've already agreed to it, basically. What's going to be changing is the uh, uh, funding on uh, revenue sharing. The state of Wisconsin has a $5 billion surplus. What's coming down is they pretty much agreed that they're going to change the revenue sharing to a, uh, they're going to propose to take $1 billion of that and uh, allocate it that to the State proportionally, uh, towns, counties, uh, cities proportionally, and from now on they plan on funding to see the sales tax. So instead of basically money coming from the taxpayers for that, it would be the nice thing about that the sales tax is people from out of state are, are helping our. So I thought that was a big thing mentioning. I'll be going on. Uh, uh, to see what's going again this Friday. Uh, the only one I'm not going to is the 28th uh, uh, Stevens Point. And I'm having an auction on the 29th, and there's something there for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Live auction on the 29th. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Anybody else have anything they want to comment on or discuss? Question? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Uh, right. Right. We are done.